That new low bezeled 16 inch MacBook Pro so many of you are excited for. Well, guess what? Your boy predicted it back with my MacBook Pro 10 video, giving it the redesign treatment or having it stand in its own tier separate from that of the pre existing 15 inch MacBook Pros. According to today's rumor by Economic Daily News, that MacBook Pro is going to be starting at $3,000, people. 3K for something that, without question, like without a doubt, is going to ship with 256 gigabytes of SSD by default. You're gonna have to spend $400 to $600 extra just to get this thing anywhere near a terabyte. It's gonna be bad, people. If you were hoping that these future generation MacBooks were somehow going to be cheaper and add lower bezeled and better screens and better performance, better cooling and that kind of thing, it's definitely coming at a price. You guys know that I don't have the most belief in economic daily news, but I thought we could pick apart today's rumor starting now. Jeff Lynn has made some claims in the past that I do not believe in. It's not a super reliable source, but I also believe that there's not exactly no truth to this report. Sometimes they report on things that don't make any sense, and other times they'll report on things that I think make total sense. The fact, though, that we're getting Quo also confirming a 16-inch MacBook Pro coming out this year, and also we're getting concrete display resolutions, like the new generation MacBook Pro is going to have a screen resolution of 3072 by 1920, which is a noticeable improvement over the 2880 by 1800 resolution that we currently have on our 15 inch macbook pros when we're getting that specific out of a number it usually means we're getting it from a supply chain and it can be to expect multiple people reporting on the same thing it's like okay yeah we should expect it and they're saying it's coming in october the part of the report i don't quite believe in is the part that says we're also getting a 13 inch macbook pro refresh and we're also getting a macbook air refresh even though yes if you guys can remember it was just a couple weeks ago apple already updated the baseline 13 inch macbook pro gave it the touch bar, keeping it at the same price, and they also lowered the price of the MacBook Air, changing that lineup, changing the butterfly keyboards on both of these. A lot of people were happy with these decisions because they're making MacBooks more obtainable, more affordable by more people. I'm definitely happy they did that, but it's also just very discouraging to at the same time see that behind the scenes, Apple's also working on the most expensive MacBook ever. This thing's going to be insanely priced, but hey, I mean, it will look pretty good. My question, though, that I'm curious about is how are they going to justify or get people interested in in a $3,000 MacBook Pro for several reasons. If it's meant to be at a new tier for pros that the 15 inch MacBook Pro, you know, that's just not cutting it. They need to go further. They need something like almost as powerful as an iMac Pro, maybe more powerful than an iMac Pro. And they also need it to be mobile. The thing is there's no new Intel chips that have come out recently that they could easily swap in to the 15 inch MacBook Pro design. That current design has pretty much the latest generation Intel CPUs. So the only way they could market this $3,000 dollar macbook pro at the sales point of well this one is faster than the macbook pros we already have is if they start actually equipping desktop cpus into this thing which knowing apple and how they try to keep things thin and light and how they've had run-ins in the past with cooling systems in macbooks i doubt that i really really doubt that they're actually going to start equipping like desktop class cpus in this macbook pro there's also the small chance there's the possibility that perhaps intel has some next generation cpu that they're not releasing yet and apple as some to contract with Intel and they have early access to it. So there's going to be some new type of laptop CPU that no one else has yet that hasn't been announced and that will suddenly be announced when this MacBook Pro comes out, most likely shipping in October, possibly unveiled in September, not for sure though. Both of these things I would be kind of okay with. If they decided to just go a little bit more bulky and decide, you know what, this is going to be a extremely powerful MacBook Pro. We don't care if it's heavier. We don't care if the device itself is thicker. We're going to start, we're going to start putting like way higher class desktop CPU using this thing. And yes, it will probably have a hard time staying cool, but even with its downthrottled performance, it will be significantly faster than the current 15-inch MacBook Pros. I would be kind of interested in seeing them doing that, but I would also far prefer like a new generation of Intel CPU be unannounced and then announced with this new generation so they can be like, okay, we released this thing at the same time as the new CPUs. That way, you know we're up to date. We're not slacking behind. You know that we're updating our MacBooks as soon as the new CPUs are ready and maybe put in some like actual powerful GPU options as well. Both of these things I'd be fine with, but honestly, I think it's much more likely that it's going to be somewhat of the same hardware they already ship with the 15 inch MacBook Pros, except it will be of a higher tier by default. And when configured to higher specifications, it won't be as drastic as a profit margin as it currently is with the 15 inch MacBook Pros. I hope that's the situation. Or maybe the selling point of the 16 inch MacBook Pro with its thinner bezels is going to be, hey, we actually put a good cooling system 
system in this time. You don't have to worry about the CPU being clocked down all the time because we've figured out a way to cool off the computer in an adequate way. I know, shocking. Isn't this an amazing time we live in? There were some people on Mac rumors that were drawing up concepts that there's going to be two new MacBook Pro redesigns, one of which is 16 inches, one of which is 13 inches, both of which have the thinner bezel design all the way around. Personally, I don't see that happening. I don't think it's going to be a redesign for both sizes because it's very, very rare that Apple refreshes the entire MacBook Pro line twice a year. They've already updated the 13 inch and 15 inch models. Now to go in with a redesign in 2019, for one, it would be premature because usually the update cycle for MacBook designs is every four years. We've had the current design scheme since 2016. So if they were to release it now, that would be kind of early. I think it's more likely that we're seeing this exclusive early access design for the 16 inch model. And then in 2020, we'll see that design language and that design style brought to other configurations and brought to more affordable markets. But in 2019, they're going to start it off with the higher end, super expensive budget. Basically, YouTubers are people with tons of money that they can burn on just a laptop. Starting at 3K means that it'll likely be configurable to easily $10,000 probably. I know that sounds crazy, but this is Apple we're talking about here. The same company makes a Mac Pro that starts at $6,000 and ships with a 256 gig SSD. So that's why it won't shock me if the specifications are a joke for what they're asking. My top number one feature though that I really, really hope they bring to this new design with the thinner bezels and this higher resolution is Face ID. I'm such a big fan of it on the iPad and the iPhone. And on Twitter, lots of people have brought up to me that it's not going to be possible on a MacBook because the upper display panel of the MacBook, you know, the part that opens up is far too thin to house Face ID sensors because currently we've only seen Face ID sensors on things like our iPhones, which are pretty thin, but nowhere near as thin as the top panel of a MacBook Pro. In fact, the thinnest thing we have Face ID sensors on is actually the iPad Pro at 5.9 millimeters. It's a pretty thin device. I even have a case on mine right now. And those sensors, they're able to pack in a thin device like that. But a lot of people still have doubts that Apple would be able to embed the Face ID sensors into a MacBook Pro display panel, which I think it's possible. I think a lot of people are being more doubtful that they wouldn't redesign the display panel somehow. For one, you're storing a lot more things in the iPad design than just the Face ID sensors. Like there's battery in here. There's a motherboard in here. There's lots of other things layered. Like the microphone ports are literally right above the Face ID sensor. So they're able to fit Face ID sensors into a fairly thin design that's also packing around a ton of other stuff. The fact that the MacBook Pro, you know, CPU, motherboard, battery, all of that is stored in the base part. And the only thing that top part is housing is the display and the webcam. I feel like it's possible. It may have to be redesigned and tweaked a little bit to be a tad thicker or maybe not as curved as the current MacBook Pros are. You know, the warp on the back. It's a little bit round on the outside of a MacBook Pro. But personally, I think that would totally sell this thing if they were able to incorporate such a reliable and such a cool biometric into a MacBook design that we know is the future. I could see a lot of people justifying that insanely high price tag. But if it doesn't have Face ID and it's just standard Touch ID and the big selling point is the bezels are a little bit thinner and the CPU is a little bit better than our current 15 inch MacBook Pros, then I think this thing is going to be an extreme disappointment. And because of everyone doubting Apple, I think there's a good chance that it's not going to have Face ID, which bums me out. Not that I'm in the market for a MacBook Pro, but I still just think this is going to be heavily criticized, insanely expensive, and your boy as the Apple sheep is going to have a very difficult time defending it. I'm going to be like, you know what? Yeah, you're all angry at it. And I, I, I really honestly get it. I'm angry at it too. As much as I want to be excited for this new redesign, I can't help but think of nothing else but missed opportunities. And that's just about it. The most impressive additions to the MacBook line this year are most likely going to be that budget 13 inch MacBook Pro with touch bar that we've already seen and the price reduction of the MacBook Air. Those are like the two biggest additions that most people are going to appreciate. This insanely expensive MacBook Pro is most likely going to be like the laughing stock of the year. Expect many, many more jokes about the thousand dollar pro stand. What to expect from a company that charges a thousand dollars for a stand? Three thousand dollars is a bargain. I'm using it in that mockery joke, but it's true. I actually mean that. Anyway, let me know what you guys think of a MacBook Pro starting at three thousand dollars. What would they have to do to this machine to make it worth buying? Is it an adequate cooling system so that you don't have to worry about down throttling? Is it face ID? Is it specifications at a good price? Even if they are high end specifications, they just have to be really, really powerful. They have to be really, really good for $3,000. Let me know what you're thinking by hitting me up over on Twitter or joining our Discord. This is your Apple Sheep here, and I will see you guys in the next one.